As I was cleaning, I found a note in the bathroom garbage can. I found a, a suicide note. It got pretty real. My name is Joelle Pouliot. I'm a journalist and a mental health advocate, and I also live with bipolar disorder. There's no greater fear for caregivers than thinking that their loved one will take their own life. Yet, while suicide and suicidal thoughts are a reality for many people suffering from mental health issues, talking about suicide is still treated as taboo. But ignoring suicidal thoughts won't make them disappear. So how can caregivers and their loved ones broach this very complex topic and learn to talk about dark thoughts in a safe and meaningful way? So when it comes to caregivers talking about suicide, um, I think this is probably very delicate and a very fearful topic. It, it might have a lot to do with how was the person's entry into their mental illness? Did they start with a suicide attempt? Or did their depression eventually lead them to that? Suicidal thoughts come at different times for different people. For me, the dark thoughts started slowly during episodes of depression, but then quickly began to take over my mind. La différence entre pensée suicidaire et geste suicidaire, c'est une mince ligne, mais euh, je crois personnellement, à mon expérience, que quand tu as la pensée, tu es encore prêt à en parler, euh, puis à vouloir ouvrir le dialogue. Quand tu as décidé que ça se passait, ça se passe, puis tu n'en parles pas, puis tu n'avertis pas personne. Marco est un close friend et un suicide survivor. Il a toujours été l'un des few people who I can openly speak with about suicidal thoughts. Because for caregivers, it can be hard to understand that suicidal thoughts don't always mean that someone will act on them. So, Joelle, she told me that she wanted to kill herself. I remember uh, my mom calling me, telling me I had to head to her apartment as quickly as possible because she was suicidal and she had these really dark thoughts. So that's what I did. I, I got in my car and went to her place. And I got to the 19th floor and I knocked on her door and she wasn't answering. And that was um, very scary. You just feel powerless when, when, when that kind of thing happens. You don't know, you don't know what to do. You feel, you just feel so powerless. Moi, j'ai découvert que j'étais bipolaire parce que je me suis rendu à l'hôpital sur une civière, euh, presque en fait mort quand je suis arrivé à l'hôpital. Aussitôt que je me suis réveillé, c'était un peu plus un épisode psychotique que j'avais. Euh, je voulais pas manger parce que je voulais les araignées dans ma soupe. À un moment donné, ma mère part puis elle, elle nomme la date ou la journée de la semaine. Puis là, je fais comme, je réalise que ça fait une semaine que, euh, que je suis dans le coma. Six mois après ma première tentative de suicide, j'en ai fait une deuxième. Euh, je voulais être sûr que cette fois-là, j'allais pas me réveiller. Se suicider, c'est C'est complexe. Euh, on essaie de mettre autant les choses qu'on peut en ordre. J'ai fait le ménage avant, euh, j'ai placé les choses. Euh, j'ai aussi fait euh, un geste qui est problém... en fait, aujourd'hui que je trouve problématique parce que ça a laissé des séquelles. Euh, J'avais texté à ma mère et à ma sœur que je les aimais. Euh, puis à partir de ce moment-là, ce mot-là en fait est devenu problématique parce que à chaque fois c'était comme oh mon Dieu est-ce que c'est la crise est-ce que ça arrive encore est-ce qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire. The honest truth is while caregivers might think that hospitalization is the only way to keep their loved ones safe, the message that comes across for patients can feel like we're not allowed to talk about how we feel. What we would like to have is to feel that somebody who is having suicidal thoughts can share it and that the other person can listen and can say, is there anything I can do? And if there's nothing that they can do, can they at least accompany the person? If you're dealing with a loved one who is talking about suicide or feeling suicidal or having these thoughts, I really think it's important to receive that instead of saying, no, don't do that, no, don't think that. It's important as a caregiver to be open to hearing these difficult things. At other times, we want to engage in, do you need a safety plan? Do you need something where um, if it really becomes too much of you, here's what you're going to do? And it could be, here's who I'm going to call, or here's where I'm going to go, or I'm not going to be by myself tonight, or I'm going to make sure that I don't drink. These are hard conversations to have. 
Being open about self-harm and dark feelings is something no caregiver wants to deal with. But silence is worse than any words that might be said. Today, I'm able to sit with my family and talk about suicide, but it took us years to get to that level of understanding, empathy, and trust. Not everyone has that kind of time. I remember we were out for a walk once, and I knew you were ha having these dark thoughts, and you said, like, oh yeah, I want to die, like, all the time, all day. Yeah. I just want to die. Especially when I found out I had bipolar disorder, it was like, this isn't just once. Like, this is going to be forever. There's no cure, and we're all stuck in this forever. And it's rock and roll. Like, it's yeah. high, and it's low, and yeah. it's intense and unpredictable. Yeah. We would all rather be stuck in this forever than to not have you mm -hmm. around. I'm OK <laughs> with being stuck in this forever. Know that no matter how you're feeling, there's someone somewhere that you can talk to. Whether it's a friend, family member, caregiver, volunteer at a suicide hotline, you are not alone. Please reach out if you feel you need help and support.